I appreciate the opportunity today to talk to you, to give you an update on the uh, Carrot Improvement for Organic Agriculture Project. Uh, this is a, an OREI funded project and there are 10 of us PDs on it. So I'm going to march through the different activities that we have underway with this project uh, fairly quickly, but start with some rationale for uh, setting up the project. Who needs better carrots? Uh, about 9% of the U.S. carrot crop is grown in organic systems. And uh, whereas organic growers and consumers of uh, organically grown carrots typically are able to find their market, their, their, their product in the marketplace, there certainly is need for some improvement of the crop. From an organic grower standpoint, uh, both orange as well as more novel colors are of interest. Uh, there continues to be a need for improved disease resistance of things like nematodes and also leaf blights as well as carrots that are more competitive in terms of suppressing weed growth and canopy closure. And I'll talk about those as part of our project. In addition to the growers' needs, the consumers are interested in carrots from the standpoint of the, the color they provide, the convenience that something like baby bee carrots provides to them, and the crunch that they provide in the diet. Uh, that crunch is part of the culinary quality, which uh, involves uh, perception of sweetness and also what we call harshness or sort of a turpentiny flavor as well as that succulence or, or crunchiness. In addition to that, consumers are very interested in the, in, in the nutritional quality of uh, carrots. So uh, uh, I'll be going through each of the different activities of the project, but a, a more general overview is presented in this slide. Uh, the, so the heart of the project involves uh, field trials in four U.S. locations where we're comparing carrots grown uh, side by side or, or at least near each other under organic and conventional management uh, practices. In addition to this uh, four location field trial, uh, we have some more specific, more specific targeted ongoing research activities looking at things like uh, not nematode resistance, uh, the uh, evaluation of soil quality and its influences on and effects on carrot growth, uh, looking at foliar diseases of carrots, uh, issues related to seed production, looking at the uh, relationship between top size and weed competition, and also some more specific projects on breeding for top size and alternary leaf blight resistance. But ultimately, a major product of this uh, project will be looking at generating information for you in the organic industry that are growers and consumers of organically grown carrots. So to start with the four location field trial, uh, the four locations are in California, Indiana, Washington, and Wisconsin. Um, I, on the first slide, I didn't have the, uh, the uh, institutions with which each of the co-PDs work, uh, so I've included these as we go along. Joan Nunez is with the University of California, uh, Cooperative Extension System. Lori Hoagland is with uh, Purdue University, and she has a research component of, her, of this project as well. Tim Waters at Washington State, and Aaron Silva with the University of Wisconsin. So at each of these four locations, there are paired management trials, paired in the sense of organic and conventional. And on each of these trials, we have uh, 36 different entries of carrots being evaluated. Among these entries are, are 16 cultivars or named varieties that are available in the market and 20 breeding stocks that vary for some of the traits we're interested in assessing. And the project is uh, ongoing for four years. Uh, um, just to, for those of you familiar with carrots, uh, I won't. If, you, if you're not, I won't bore you with going through the list. But uh, the, these are the 16 named varieties. We have attempted to include the major varieties that are grown in, in uh, at least most of the organic production areas, including um, primarily orange, but also some uh, red and yellow and, and uh, purple carrots. Uh, the one name you might not recognize is Brasilia, which is interesting. Uh, it's not particularly well adapted to the U.S., but it has very large tops. Uh, so uh, 16 different cultivated varieties. I should mention that some of these are open pollinated and uh, some of these are hybrid varieties. So just to give you some pictures of some of the carrots, show you what they look like in our trials, uh, I'm going to give you four slides of, of photographs of a subset of the, of the carrots in the trial. First two are going to be from the uh, named varieties, and the second two slides are from the experimentals. So, so some of the named varieties include red core chantonay, bolero, and western red. I'll talk about these in terms of uh, flavor a little bit more. Brasilia, uh, which you're maybe not so familiar with, and Sun 255 and sugar snacks, the latter two used often for baby carrot, organic baby carrot production. Some of the experimentals uh, included are uh, 
we don't give them names at this point yet, but just numbers. Uh, so there, this is an example of a red experimental, a yellow one, an orange one. All three of these are quite good flavor. I wanted to include those in the pictures. In addition to reds, yellows, and, and oranges, some different versions of purple carrots, which can come in many shades, shapes, and uh, patterns of coloration. So just to give you an overview, that uh, the idea here is to have a wide range of carrots, both in terms of their the, the variation of the crop that you see in the market, but also in terms of plant growth, root shape, flavor, and uh, top size, which I'll talk more about as we go along. So talking a little more about uh, top height in, at this initial point in my presentation, we're interested in top height, because, again, because of its potential in having a, being a major factor in suppressing weeds. Among these uh, 36 entries that I, I briefly went over, uh, we find a twofold variation in, in top height amongst these different uh, genetic stocks. Interestingly, the relative, the relative height uh, ranking um, from these four different locations uh, was uh, pretty much the same across the trials. And, and we're two years into this project, I should say. Uh, so we're, this is half of the, the data for this. Uh, and we didn't see much uh, production by variety interaction, production meaning organic versus conventional. Uh, just as a point of reference, red core Chantenay, western red, Brasilia, and upper cut were among the large top varieties in most locations, and Nelson, Rumba, and Hilmar, and Napoli among the small top, uh, for those of you growing carrots. I need to mention the great assistance that Jared Zeistro has provided in analyzing the data for that I'll be presenting for this, uh, this uh, project. So moving on from the four location uh, trials then, we, we have some specific research activity looking at the question of what can we do uh, to improve carrots for growers and consumers. And one improvement for growers would be ha to have better root knot nematode resistance. And Phil Roberts at UC Riverside is undertaking this. About 80% of U.S. care production are infested by uh, root knot nematodes, and we have resistance genes identified for some of the warmer season nematodes, not for Hapla at this point yet, but for Incognita javanica. Uh, in nine, and nine of our entries are, in fact, uh, resistant to root knot nematodes, and Phil is evaluating these, this, these in his trials as he's going along as well, where we're doing trialing and selection in infested fields and also in greenhouse uh, evaluations, and I'm doing some seed production to go along with that. So I wouldn't won't show you a lot of pictures of root knot infested nematodes, but you see one in the upper left hand corner where we got some resistance out of Brasilia, uh, and it doesn't take a uh, degree in nematology to identify the resistant plants in that mix. They're all grown in the same row in the same okay. field. So that sort of resistance has led to some the development of some orange inbreds as well as some uh, cut and peel type hybrids at this point already. And in addition to the Brasilia resistance, we've also identified resistance in several other exotic sources of uh, cultivated carrots on the bottom. Uh, these aren't full grown, rather immature, but some carrots from Syria on the left, from Homs, from Pingding from China, and Scarlet Fancy Favorite. Uh, that's a cross between two open pollinated European carrots. So some different sources of nematode resistance that we're breeding into some of the stocks in the CIOA project. Moving on not next to uh, the activities that Lori Hoagland has underway, uh, so, uh, Lori is looking at the relationship between so soil quality and carrot growth uh, and uh, has found significant variation in, among the soil assays for the four locations. And uh, in some cases, differences between organic and conventional paired trials in locations in terms of varying labile organic pools and varying bacterial fungal archaeal community composition. Uh, there are not particularly large uh, organic conventional differences, at least in some of the locations. Uh, and she, Lori is also undertaking some effort to look at the, the rate, relationship of genetic variation in the carrots to that response to the soil. So that's what, what Lori has underway. Moving on to foliar diseases, again, trying to put together this package of an improved carrot. Uh, Lindsay Dutrois is uh, doing an evaluation of the foliar diseases of carrots. Uh, Lindsay will be talking uh, tomorrow, I believe, uh, and uh, she's been doing diagnosis uh, of these diseases from all locations, has pr primarily identified Altenaria and Cercospora uh, as, as well on, on uh, all locations, but in addition, some Xanthomonas and powdery mildew. And uh, the first publication for the project is one that Lindy, Lindsay put out, uh, noting the first report of Xanthomonas in Indiana. 
Judd Calhoun's effort is going to be one to get back to this question of what does uh, top size and rate of plant growth have to do with weed competitiveness. And uh, th this is happening. Uh, Jed's activities are only going to be in the latter two years. And so he'll be looking at um, uh, comparing 10 of these different cultivars and breeding stocks in weedy and weed-free plots, looking at things like emergency light perception, canopy development in Wisconsin and uh, John Navazio. Uh, before, and we'll be looking at this in, in Washington. Get back to the picture. So uh, there are huge gen variations genetically. These are all planted the same day, uh, carrots uh, for top size. And uh, the question that we're looking to answer here is what does the variation in top size have to do with weed suppression? That's what Jed and, and John will be looking at. John, as well as Michaela uh, Colley from OSA, are involved in not only the weed competitiveness, but also evaluation of of uh, breeding stocks, providing breeding stocks, project coordination, and increasing seed, um, looking at some seed production of promising uh, carrots in the trial, and also coordinating the, this relatively uh, complex effort in, in interacting with uh, the, the uh, uh, grower, seed company, and other egg community, as well as consumers, to get feedback on our project. That outreach and education undertaken by the COA pro IOA project, uh, led primarily by Michaela, involves an advisory panel of uh, stakeholders, some outreach to at least 200 farmers thus far, farmer researcher participation, promotion and, and educational material preparation, and also graduate, undergraduate, and high school student training in different aspects of the project. Things I have underway involve providing some of the breeding stocks that uh, I mentioned earlier on. Uh, I'm, I'm consumer quality is in, uh, important, and I'm uh, undertaking most of that. Uh, looking at evaluation of flavor and carotenoid pigments in these breeding stocks from these different locations, uh, carotenoids as well as anthocyanins, antioxidants, and nitrates, and also uh, undertaking some selection and uh, evaluation of markers to look at top size and alternaria resistance because of the, these two important factors. Um, I think in the interest of time, I probably ought to wrap it up here pretty quickly, but there, there's a fair bit of, uh, a large amount of variation from entry to entry, uh, even amongst orange carrots, there's a fourfold variation in nutritional content. And uh, amongst a relatively small number of red, yellow, and purple carrots, there's a wide range of nutritional content amongst them. Flavor also varies significantly from mild succulent, uh, good tasting carrots to some pretty bad ones. Uh, interestingly, that genotype accounts for most of the variation in flavor across these locations. Haven't noticed much of an organic versus conventional difference in flavor or in nutritional quality at this point. Uh, so why does anthocyanin vary so much? Well, it's because the distribution can range from a solid purple to just on the skin. Uh, I won't go through this, but point out that we're looking at the effect of plant competition, not only in the weed comparison, uh, weed, weed free trials, but also looking at uh, different plant populations and the, the effect of plant population, how many plants per meter of row, uh, what's that effect uh, have on the top size. And as you have a more crowded planting, you have taller tops. Some carrots respond to that more than others, and you see those with more, more uh, upward pointing slopes are the ones that respond more to competition. Um, uh, just a quick mention on flavor. Bolero is generally the best one in the trials. Western Red's generally pretty good, and so are some of the breeding stocks. Most of the, the available cultivars are pretty good flavor. The poorest ones are some of the breeding lines. Uh, upcoming activities include two more years of our four location trialing, continuing ongoing uh, research projects, weed competitive evaluation, seed increases, more information from these trials will be put at our website. We're getting some photos there already. Uh, and, and I have to say thank, thanks to uh, Kathleen McCluskey for, for that help. And uh, we also have continuing field days, grower meetings and surveys. And uh, like this uh, couple from the 1850s growing their vegetables, care improvement uh, yet today is a team effort. And uh, we do have a website, uh, like all good projects. And uh, we appreciate very much the funding uh, for this project, and I'd welcome any questions later on, but thank you very much.